Hello. This is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and in this video we're going to continue on from where we left off in the previous, where we're setting up a basic AI conditional statement manager. So, let's get started. First thing we need to do is we're going to set up the line of sight calculator. And what it's going to do is it's basically going to cast a ray into the scene, and we're going to have it cast a ray towards the target and therefore we can test to see whether or not anything is obstructing its view. So, well, we could add it directly onto the basic enemy itself, but since we're going to be making it do rotations and such, that could cause some issues when it comes to moving this enemy when we get further on down the line. So let's create a new object, and let's call it Radar. Now, if you take a look at the radar, they're at different locations. So let's just parent it up. But the problem is they're still in the same different locations. Now, if the basic enemy were to rotate, the radar would rotate along it as well. And that's not what we want. So let's reset that to the zero position. OK. Now we're going to add in a finite state machine. Let's, let's call this one orientation. All right, so it's going to be doing a few things. First off, we're going to be telling it to look at the object that we want to target. So, look at, you can find this in the transform subsection, and let's make it look at the target. Okay, now let's draw a debug line and see how it goes. Yep, notice how it's pointing if you look at the gizmo, you notice that it's pointing towards the target now. So that does what we need it to. We're doing it every frame. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need, since this just makes it look at it, it doesn't actually give us the option to ex extract any information. So let's get a raycast going. Now a raycast will give us much more power and be able to do so. The thing is, it can be a little bit daunting to look at. It's going to be going from the game object itself. So itself, the use owner, is good. Now the position is usually used for an offset if the specify game object is a null. Since we have a game object and the position, we don't want to offset it. Let's leave that blank. But the direction, we do need to change. Now, if you take a look here, you see the gizmo, it's got the blue pointing forward, and when we were running it, the blue was pointing towards the target. That means that the Z axis is its forward axis. So since we want it to point forward, let's just put a number in, a positive number. That should give us the option. Now let's turn on the debug, change the color, and let's give this a shot. And as you can see, it's doing what we need it to. Okay, so since we now are pointing at the object and we're also doing a raycast so we can extract information, the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out what it is hit. So for that, we're going to create a game object variable. Let's call it hit object. And when we hit the object, we want it to send an event. So let's create an event. Hit object. Let's go back in here. So store the hit object. Oh, wait. I forgot to add it. Oops. <laughs> so store hit object here. And the hit event, hit object. So let's add a transition and a new state to send it to. Now, let's change the name. And now, once it's hit the object, we want to test it. Since, for example, if... Let's bring these walls back. So, for example, if it has hit the player object here, or if it has hit the wall, we need to calculate, figure that one out. So, what did I hit? And let's put in two events. So is player and not player. 
let's add in those statements is player and not player All right. now this is going to be a simple one to do all we need to do is a compare the tags so game object compare tag now before we get too far the target itself doesn't have a tag so let's give it a tag of player so now that we have the game object compare tag we're going to compare what we hit and give it the statement of if it's hit the player we've got a true event so it is a player and if it's false it's not a player now we want to do this every frame while it's in here okay so the next step add a new state let's call this one hit player And in here, we're going to use the set FSM bool. So set FSM bool. And for that, we're going to create a condition holder on here. So let's go in, let's name it conditions. And we need to give it a Boolean value. So Let's go back in here. Let's hook that up. All right, so specify the game object. We want to gain access to the Boolean value in the finite state machine of this object. It's going to be in the conditions, and it's going to be called player visible. Now in hit player, we want it to go yes. And when we're done, we're going to create a next frame event so that when it's done it will finish when it's finished going back into the raycast now we've got this set up so let's just copy it paste it change it to didn't hit player and change the value to false so not player didn't hit player and finished. So let's give this one a test. Okay, so while you see it's behind the wall, it can't see the player. And now it can. Now let's take a look on the basic enemy. And let's, let's expose this to the inspector so that we can see it as it's running. false true false true okay so I hope that answers a few questions and in the next video we're going over we're going to be continuing on in the next video and setting up the rest of the statements but until then I hope that's answered a few questions and if you like this video feel free to comment rate and subscribe have a good one